funny. Let's graph the following function. f of x is equal to, let's go x over x plus 2. Do you want x over x plus 2? No, let's go x or 1. Let's make it simple. We just want to look at the limits, right? So we're going to go, I wrote down x again. Let's go 1 over x plus 2, right? Uncharted days, how are you doing? Da -da -dum -pass. Use Wolfram, yeah, I use Wolfram too. Hey, Chicho and Chad, hope you had happy holidays. You too, you too as well. And happy new year, Uncharted days. So let's say we want to graph this, right? Graph this function. So the steps are the same, right? So first of all, you factor. If you're looking at a function, factor. Well, we don't need to factor this. It's already in simplest form, factored form, right? Then what you do is you find your restrictions. Restrictions. Both vertically, well, no, let's say you find your restrictions. Okay, we'll talk about asymptotes and stuff. So our restriction in mathematics is no dividing by zero. Really, that's the only restriction we have in mathematics. Uncharted days, if we have any more, let me know. But uh, as far as high school mathematics is concerned, and they say restriction of uh, no taking even roots of negative numbers, but that's not a restriction. That's dumbing down society, right? The, the indoc like uh, slowing down education, <laughs> education, right? They used to teach it to us uh, when I was in school, complex numbers, but they don't anymore right now in my part of the world, right? So the only restriction we have in mathematics is no dividing by zero. So what you do whenever you have rational functions or any type of function, you look at the denominator, and if you can't divide by zero, then you say the denominator cannot equal zero, right? So this part, x plus 2 cannot equal zero, so x cannot equal negative 2. That is your restriction for this function. So now that we're starting to get values, numbers, let's generate our graph. So here's our graph. Right. Cartesian coordinate system, here's our x, here's f of x, which is really your y, and x cannot equal negative 2. So here's doop, doop, here's negative 2, and what does it mean x cannot equal negative 2? Well, what you do with that is you say, what's your asymptotes? Right. So for next thing you do after you find your restrictions is you find your vertical, vertical asymptotes. Your vertical asymptote, if x cannot equal negative 2, your vertical asymptote is x cannot equal, uh, x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote, right? It's just terminology, right? And gang, don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist. Marco. Chicho, specifically, can you inform me on how to use limits to solve for horizontal asymptote? I'm going to show you right at, right from here, right? You're going to see what limits means, right? So x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. So this is an asymptote is basically a boundary that your function cannot touch or cross, right? So you, your function can't equal x is equal to negative 2 that means it can't this is a no-go zone this is the line right the universe explodes if you try to touch this line okay now that's your vertical asymptote your horizontal asymptote has these three things you have to consider right if you have a rational function f of x if you have a x to the power of n the highest power degree on this thing over bx to the power of n, the highest power in the denominator, okay, what you do is you say if n is greater than m, if the highest, if the power up top is greater than the power in the bottom, if the degree, the highest power on the x is greater on top than it is in the bottom, then there is no horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. If n is equal to m, if the power up top is the same as the power in the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is the degree in front divided by this degree, right? So the horizontal asymptote 
is going to be y is equal to a over b and if the degree up top is smaller than the degree in the bottom focus 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 if n is less than m then the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero which is the x line right which is the case that we have right now gang thank you for the follows by the way and subs and donations and bits and stuff if i'm missing my apologies i just want to make sure we i don't make any mistakes no brain farts while i look here and look here right so what we have here here is a horizontal asymptote that means y this is y equals to zero the line y equals to zero that means f of x can never be zero which should be intuitive right can you plug anything in, in for x to make f of x equal to zero no you can't if you set x is equal to zero that's one over two well when x is zero y is one over two right i really need to uh, to get better with mathematics this just goes over my does it on charter days <laughs> it's it, 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 it once we start putting points on here you'll see how this plays out right now take a look at this thing now we need to graph this thing right we got our vertical asymptote that's a no-go zone we got our horizontal asymptote because a no-go zone right so what we have here okay is the boundaries of this function and that's the way you start graphing a function you find the areas that you can't go to right no, no go zone no go zone no go zone no go zone we got two of them right then what you do is you find you try to find some key points okay first of all we could do a table of values if you want x and f of x right let's do a couple of table of values now we don't have a no go to no go to zone when x is equal to zero so let's find out what the y intercept is when x is equal to zero because that's negative one that's zero that's one that's two and etc right so let's find out what f of zero is when x is zero f of zero is going to be one over zero plus two which is going to be one over two cool so when x is zero y is one over two so if that's one we're here all right that point is on this graph now what you do is you ask yourself what happens to the function as you approach this asymptote right now the limits what you can do is we'll do it by point right but that's where calculus comes in because calculus sort of gives you the behavior of a function defines it better right so let's assume we're here and we're going to start moving towards this asymptote so let's find out what f of negative one is right so what we're going to do we're going to go f of negative one is equal to one over negative one plus two negative one plus two is one so this just becomes one so when x is negative one y is one right when x is negative one y is one cool now one of the properties of a function is when you're graphing something is asymptotes sort of act like magnets if this is my function coming towards an asymptote the function either does this because this sort of acts like a magnet pushing pushing it pushing it pushing it, right the function comes like this it either goes like this right because it can't touch it or it comes in and goes like this dives down or comes in and does a or right there's a couple other things it could do too right so all right so without calculus you can only precisely estimate what a value is at a certain point uh, no we're we're actually finding the exact value right now right we're actually finding what y is exactly at when x is equal to negative one right and then what we do is we can get closer and closer to negative two we can just put points here points here points here but what's going to happen is basically this thing's going to shoot up right so what you can do is you can write it like this you can say 
f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side right let me write this bigger so you see it right it's sort of terminology again mathematicians are the laziest people on the planet they, they create little symbols to figure things out right so if you got a function this function right here as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side so what we're saying is if we're on this function we're going to approach negative 2 from above negative 2 what is f of x equal to well y goes up 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 it equals infinity it goes forever so it's going to be infinity and you can say positive infinity if you want because sometimes it might go down and become negative infinity right now check this out what happens as you go this way as x gets bigger and bigger so let's say x is 2 if you sub in x is 2 f of 2 is equal to 1 over 2 plus 2 which is 1 over 4 so when x is 2 you're at a quarter and because an asymptote, again, even a horizontal asymptote, acts like a magnet. Here, let me put this down. Acts, so if this is a horizontal asymptote and we're coming down to this, this thing keeps on pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. It will go closer and closer to this asymptote, but it will never touch it. Right? So what this means is this function goes like this. Why does it do that? Because no matter how big an x value you put in for x in this function the bottom is going to become bigger and bigger and one divided by a huge number is going to be really close to zero but it's never going to be touching zero and it will never be negative right so we're good on this side of the vertical asymptote and what you want to do whenever you're graphing functions is you want to find out what's happening on either side of vertical asymptotes or holes or whatever you have right so you're mainly concerned when you're graphing something the zones that you're going to look at are the x restrictions that you have right so vertical asymptotes that you have so we know what the function is going to do on this side and we know the function is not going to be here otherwise it wouldn't be a function right hello chicho how do you how you how do you do I do well, thank you. I hope you're doing well as well. Happy New Year from Jamaica. Ha ha, right on Jamaica. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year, brother. Infinitesimal, it becomes infinitesimal. I hope you guys are having a nice warm Christmas. Here, you can hear the rain. It's gotten wintry, right? So we know what's going on on this side. Let's see what happens on this side right and by the way the other way you could write for this is f of x what happens to f of x as x approaches zero right uh, not sorry not zero as x goes to infinity right as x goes to infinity as x gets bigger and bigger right f of x approaches zero right? now what happens as you approach negative 2 from the negative side from this side right is it going to go like this or is it going to go like this let's check it out so let's find out let's pick another integer closest the closest integer to negative 2 okay no mods in the chat elder god is here yes but how do we prove that using limits uh how do you prove it using limits this is sort of the proof i don't know if it's you call the proof uh what kind of proof oh you're thinking about doing uh calculus in terms of oh okay i'll show you okay i'll show you after we look at what the function does this way okay you're talking about calculus doing the first fundamental theorem of calculus so we'll do it okay 